Good morning, YTPC. Piping artist here. Um, <clears throat> I'm not painting. It might be a few weeks yet before I um, do another painting because I'm in the middle of um, packing and bringing my stuff to the North Houston Woodlands Conroe area. It's a huge area, but it's gorgeous here. Uh, super sunny, as you can see. I have a whole list of stuff that I wanted to talk about, maybe ask some questions and show you some cool finds. So we'll do that as soon as we get back. Good Monday morning. So, um, I did a video a few minutes ago and it was just way too bright, so I had to erase it and start over. And I thought it was a little bit long winded, so I'm going to try to make it a little bit less, I don't know, time, less words. Uh, I was going to start off with some cool finds, but for those of you who don't want to watch the whole video, because I'm not painting today, I'm just rambling and I'm in the middle of a move um, so I came and dropped off some boxes in this cool little area in North Houston that I'm moving back to um, I've had um, a couple of job offers but no contract with the district here as of yet um, so I have some questions for you guys. First, let me tell you, I'm, I'm smoking a straight pipe today. Um, it's borrowed because I can't find the pipes that I left out of the boxes. They're somewhere. I don't know whose house I left them at. I'm, I'm, and I usually carry them in a bag with me. So my, my pipe, my tobaccos, they're all, most of them are boxed up, but I left out a few. So today I'm smoking this, which was borrowed from a friend. It looks like my Medeco, but it's um, just a borrowed pipe from someone. It's just a made in Italy generic pipe, but it's it's smoked pretty well. I'm smoking Eileen's Dream. And what's funny about that is that's um, a sample of Eileen's Dream I gave to a friend who saved me by having some because it's my favorite tobacco. So um, questions first. I have a few questions. Um, for everybody out there in the, the uh, YTPC, and even if you're not a part of the YTPC, feel free to either do a VR or comment down below. Uh, my first question is, um, how do I get rid of getting tongue bite? I only get it from certain pipes. I don't get it from my Medeco, which is shaped like this. Um, I use it when I paint. It's a really easy light pipe, so it's easy for me to paint and not think about it. It's got a big bowl. But some of my pipes, my shorter ones, um, sometimes when I borrow a pipe from someone, recently actually, I get tongue bite and I don't understand, is it do I need to pack them all differently? Is it, do I need to use filters? So maybe one of you guys can tell me how to not get tongue bite, because I get it with some, but not with others. And I pack my bowls the same in every pipe, so. Um, but my shorter ones, I tend to get more, so I'm thinking maybe I need some more filters or something, I don't know. That's my first question. My second question, I kind of have a little backstory, so I gotta tell you the backstory first. Um, it's about cognitive dissonance. I've heard that word so many times and never really understood it. Um, cognitive dis dissonance. I've recently had to break what you would call, I guess, a vow. Um, 
I promised to stay somewhere for a certain length of time and had to break that promise. I mean, it's not like I, it was a divorce. It was life altering for anybody. Um, at least I don't think it was. I hope it wasn't. But I was dealing with a place that had a completely different outlook on life than what I'm used to. And I've lived in small communities before. Um, this particular community, I found an absolute lack of respect from the adults, not all of them, from the parents, from administrators, from um, the workers at Starbucks, the people who, you know, check you out at the HEB that happened to be there, which was a teeny tiny one, but it was an HEB nonetheless, and I love HEB products, so I, I shopped there. But it just seemed like the people that were from this area were, were not all of them. I did meet some pretty phenomenal people, and there was a really amazing island in the store. The, um, if you guys do ever go through any areas through West Texas, definitely go check out the Train Car Cigar Bar. They have live music, they have trivia. The people that hang out there are pretty um, mellow. Um, there's a lot of oil field workers that go there. There's a lot of locals that go there. And I find that the majority of their clientele are, are decent and amazing people. You can hold conversations with them. But my issue was I grew up a Jehovah's Witness and I fought to find out the truth and not just believe what I'm told. I also fought to be treated with respect because as a female and as someone who was asking too many questions and someone who was not baptized into that organization, um, I felt like I wasn't taken seriously and I wasn't, um, I was treated very poorly. So my whole life I feel like I have really put forth an effort to be treated with decency and be told the truth. And I've always tried to be honest and honest to where I can. There's times where you have to put on a filter because of social norms or um, job description. You know, teachers can't always say what what's on their mind. And sometimes it's for the best, not just for the students, but for other teachers or whatnot. <laughs> but I did have an issue with some people a couple in particular, and they would say things like jabbing, very um, hurtful put downs. Um, I don't know any other way to say it. There were um, people who would flat out lie, um, children, parents, um, other coworkers, other people just in town that I'd uh, come across that would, um, they, they, they weren't truthful, I don't think, with themselves or with others. And I had several um, issues, which is why I had to decide to um, stay and fulfill my obligation or to take care of my mental and emotional health and say it's, it's not worth it for me or anyone involved, so I'm going to go ahead and dismiss myself, remove myself, resign, which I did. I did leave some people upset. Um, so my, my cognitive dissonance was, you know, you should always stay and fulfill a contract and fulfill a promise and to the best of your ability. But I also had to um, decide what was best for my children and myself. And my, and my mental state has been gaining strength. I was doing some, some therapy and, and trying to figure out why I responded the way I did throughout my life for things. And I take full responsibility for myself, but that two things happened recently. Um, the things that I would fought for to not become and to not um, be treated in a certain manner, um, those things took precedence over, you know, my, my feeling of needing to up be, to fulfill an obligation that I, I felt wasn't in my best interest or the best interest of anyone around me because I had to be honest and straightforward with someone and tell them 
you said these things verbatim to me. And they went, what? Like completely like awestruck. Like I didn't say that. I'm like, yes, yes, you did. Is this, I, I don't know if it's normal for, for people to do kind of stuff like that because I'm, I'm not used to people on a regular basis on a, a on such an extreme um, population of people that do things like that they say things and then later say oh no I never said that I was standing right there you said it to my face <laughs> so um, I don't know if it's in the water I don't know if it's chemical I don't know And then the second part of my cognitive dissonance, my, my change in thought was, I always thought, oh, those people who complain and say, oh, my mommy and daddy ruined my life and um, boohoo, poor me. I mean, I was one of those people who was like, I'm, my parents have no effect on any decisions I've made or any choices I've made or, or roads of life that I've chosen to go down. But come to find out, they had a lot to do with it. Um, I'm not crying, I'm not saying that I blame them, but I blame myself for not figuring it out sooner and finding different ways to cope with um, just issues that happened when you were, I was a kid. So this is already going to be a really long video. So that's my first two questions. My third question is, what does your faith look like? So I'm going to get into that one in just a minute because I want to kind of share some, some cool finds with you guys. Um, kind of a snooper. I am at a, I'm staying with some friends, and um, at this particular house, I was given a couple of drawers to throw some clothes in so I didn't have to live off out of a suitcase until I signed my lease and moved into my place. But um, I found, I was snooping through the drawers above the drawers that I was given, and I got permission from the owner, but I found this really cool tin. And from the colors of the paints and the drawings and whatnot, I'm guessing it's from the 60s, but it's a Pennsylvania Dutch, like, butter mint container. And my mom had a bunch of tins similar to this when I was growing up, and they had buttons in them or needles or, you know, sewing supplies. But at one point, they were cookies or something. So I've, I've kind of found it, taken it upon myself to find tins, and I have a few of my own that I find at garage sales or at secondhand stores or um, Goodwill or wherever because I think they're just so cool and I don't necessarily like to buy the new ones because I don't feel like they're more aluminum than tin and then they don't hold as much value to, value to me if they look newer. Um, I just really like the vintage look. So anyways, I got permission to snoop some more and I found the coolest little thing that there's like a little... Uh, a smoky smoking the bear and a little horse and this kind of leads into another question that I have for you guys there's a little souvenir coin from Kansas and a, some pennies and Indians are tough and being a Native American I know you're not we're not supposed to call them Indians because that's a, a falsehood but that's it's just so cute it's old and it's cute and then there's a belt buckle in here with bears on it. That was really cool. And some candles. I don't know. Um, the candles are still connected, like the old drip candles. So these must have been purchased. I mean, these are just little little things from someone's childhood. And I have, I have a couple of boxes, too. A little magnifying glass. And obviously, it's well used. Probably from the 70s or 80s, this one. Some coins. A 19... This is 23, no, 1982 penny, just cute stuff. So I thought I'd share. So um, my next question is, do you guys have a tin or a box or something that has all your little, like, childhood memory stuff in it? And have you switched it to something else? Do you, where do you keep it? Just, you know, some fun information. And then I was shown this really cool brass ashtray. It's very well used. You can tell there's kind of a ship in there and it's an anchor and um, it was brass but it's it's got some wear and tear from actually being used and there's some green in it from where the the brass brass or copper? Anyways copper I think because it turned green 
And then I found this groovy thing. This is my first purchase that I got for my new place. So once it's hung up somewhere, then I'm gonna make another video and be like, look at my find, it's so groovy. And it lights up. I don't know if you guys can see that. So from far away, it looks like one of those um, really cool old light bulbs, but it's kind of steampunky and I'm gonna kind of hopefully do my house steampunky. Um, that whole style, it's kind of cool, except for my backyard. I'm gonna make that gnomes and, and it's a huge backyard. So I'm really excited about that. So um, that's my, my cool finds. I wanna do a couple of, sh uh, three shout outs. Um, Blowing Smoke, um, he's got under 100 subs. Let's try to get him over 100 because his um, clarity and his voice and his stories are just really cool. Um, and his voice is very calming. So when I'm, I, it made me actually want to come outside this morning and have a, a pipe first thing in the morning because I watched him this morning. It was cool. And then Unfundies, aka Thabo, um, he has an interesting video on hope. And that's going to take me to my, my last question in just a minute. And then High Desert Piper also has some interesting um, videos out. So I'll put links in the description so you guys can go check them out. But um, my last question, because I'm going to go way over 15 minutes. And if you've stuck with me this far, I would really, really like you guys to, to check out Thabo's video on hope. Um, I feel like the YouTube piping community that I've gotten to know, because I don't know everybody, but the one the ones I have gotten to know... And from the comments, I feel like it's a very com um, contemplative group. I feel like you can have discussions. For the most part, most people, I mean, I've seen some of the older videos from before I was a part of this group where there was a little bit of drama and I don't want any drama. If you don't want to answer, that's why I kept it for the last. If you don't want to answer, you don't have to. But something I talked about in the beginning of my video was that um, I was raised Jehovah's Witness. My mother was Jehovah's Witness. Um, my dad ended up becoming Taoist when I was in, in my teens. So um, I had two very conflicting views. I have atheists and agnostics in my family. I have Baptists. I have Catholics. So my faith, my faith is, um, I, I guess you could call me a Christian. My faith is in Jesus and in the Bible. And I do believe he died and I do believe he conquered death and he is alive. And um, even though he came back in a physical form, he was able to transcend that physical form and is um, back in heaven. So I want to know what your faith is and how you got there. I'll make an entirely different video if if the response is decent um, about how I came to my conclusion because I did do lots of research. Um, I read, not from any church, not from any religious group, um, I did read books on theology. I've read books on Juda Jude Judaism. I have a friend who um, was raised Jewish. I have... Um, read books on Catholicism and on Taoism and Buddhism and um, Hindu. I haven't done much, much research into um, some of the current topics that are going on in the news and those religions, but um, I even, as a teenager, was curious and read some of the Satanic Bible because I was curious. I don't suggest you do it unless you have a really strong foundation in yourself and in and in kindness and um, forgiveness because that can really taint your outlook on life. It's, it's a pretty interesting book, but it blows my mind how many Christians claim to be following the Bible and yet their views are specifically stated in, in the Satanic Bible. So like the whole judgment and only treat people kind if they earn it and um, statements like that. So I've come to, to become, I guess, what you would consider a Christian. Um, so those are all my questions, and those are all my, my, my updates and my news, and I don't usually do this much talking. I have in the most recent videos been talking more than painting because 
I'm in the middle of a move, everything's packed. I'm, all my canvases are packed, all of my easels and all of my um, paints are all packed. So hopefully in the next month or so when I start getting all unpacked and getting settled, I'll be able to do another painting. So another thing, if you guys want to give me a suggestion on paintings, or you want to make an order, leave a message and I will def or a comment down below and I will definitely get something out to you by the end of June. So that being said, you guys have a wonderful week. Enjoy your Monday and um, yeah, hugs everybody.